Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Today is the beginning, the kickoff of E3. Technically, E3 Day Zero, because the day before E3, EA and their evil asses love to just take the spotlight. Therefore, we're here today watching the EA Play Conference 2019 edition. Now, before we get into this, my original plan was to do prediction videos for each of the shows, uh, do those separately, and then and then later on we, we were going to watch the conference. At least for right now, this isn't the case for EA because I just didn't have time to do it today, sadly. Not only that, but I don't even have that many predictions for EA, mainly because at this point, I don't wanna, I don't care about EA anymore. I only care about Mass Effect. I don't care about the rest of the shit. EA has been truly evil for the past five years plus and still ongoing. And every year they try and give us some piss poor excuse about like, we're sorry, here's some free DLC, buy our games, right? But now that like everything with uh, Anthem and shit like that went down and all that stuff. Yeah, it's just fucking evil. The thing I want to see the most out of this conference is someone get on their knees, apologize, and then I want someone else to come from behind them and kick them off the stage, and then I want the stage to set on fire. That's all I want. It's not going to happen, obviously, because, you know, EA has no sense of self-redemption whatsoever, but... Nonetheless, we're here. We're watching EA. Hopefully, they have something good to show. They have some timestamps here. We are watching a pre recorded thing. This is on IGN's channel. Uh, I didn't have a chance to catch it live, but later today, I will be able to catch uh, Microsoft, Devolver Digital, and I believe today is also. It's either Ubisoft or the uh, PC show. It might be the PC show, actually. PC show is probably going to be boring as fuck, but hopefully it's more entertaining than EA. But nonetheless, I've tucked up most of the time here talking about some shit. Let's get into it. Hopefully, I don't hang myself by the end of this. Alright, let's go. I pressed the play button. I pressed the play button. Did it restart itself? Are you kidding? Okay, there you go. Alright, now time to sit the controller down gently. Hopefully nothing bad happens. And... There you go. I'm going to turn off my TV because I can't hear a goddamn word this man is saying. I just hit the microphone. I also brought a... Uh, I just said this man. That's Greg Miller. I didn't even recognize the dude with his fucking beard. Are you kidding me? I gotta turn my fucking TV up to like 18, which is like really high for my TV. Because I can't hear shit. Yeah, but like I was saying before I, before I fucking realized that was Greg Miller. Um... Fucking, I brought a bottle of water, so you'll probably hear me drink this shit like a motherfucker, because my throat is dry as fuck, and my lips are kind of like, really dry too, I gotta like buy some, I gotta buy some shit, I gotta buy some like, I don't know, like, I'm a black boy, I gotta buy some cocoa butter, put that shit on here. Yeah, E3, evil people! So they're gonna start off with Jedi Fallen Order. Hopefully we see some gameplay. We probably will. And if they say that this game is coming out later this year, I want to know... I want to know the fucking time they spent developing this game. That's what I want to know. Because the last time they did this, they did this shit with Anthem, and the actual time for Anthem's development was like, what, a year and a half? So I really... Like, I'm not even excited for Star Wars anymore, either. Just, like, with all the movies and shit, and fucking... Oh, uh, whatever. I also love how EA is trying to get... Is trying to get, like, a good vibe back for, like, public appearance by constantly inviting, like... Like, uh... 
What's the word I'm looking for? Internet personalities, I guess. Like, they did it with I Justine. They did it last year with some random girl that I didn't even fucking know who she was. My apologies if you're watching this or if you are offended by that or if anyone else is offended by that. And now they're doing it with Greg Miller. So, I honestly do not know. This is so awesome to be here. It's EA Play, it's E3. It's Star Wars. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't really get any bigger. I really hope yeah, they don't do the same that thing that uh, PlayStation did at their experience like two years ago, where they did a fucking um, sit down. He just had 15 minutes of gameplay. All right, all right. So okay, that's good. Well, if they're gonna be if they're gonna be doing this like talk show sit down couch type of thing, just don't make it boring. That's all I want to say. I'm gonna shut up now because people probably want to know what the hell's going on. They're not dead, everybody. Set post order sixty six after the events in episode three, when all the Jedi were hunted down. Well, not at all. When the Jedi were hunted down and eliminated. So, Stig. That's the nutshell of the entire game. What are we about to see? Where are we at in the game right now for context? Okay, so Cal's, like, this takes place maybe about three hours into the game. Okay. So Cal's built himself up. He's not a lowly Padawan anymore. Okay. He's not a full Jedi yet. Sure. Um, like Vince said, this is unedited. Um, we had one of our star players, Blair. <laughs> unedited? Um, so it's God mode on? This is an axe for playthrough. Okay. So we're going to see some really cool stuff. Um, he practiced a few times. <laughs> oh, man, I'm hitting my fucking, uh, my wires on my microphone. Two or three dozen. I apologize. It takes place on Kashyyyk, which okay. is the Wookiee Wookie planet. Of course. And Cal's on a mi mission to restart the Jedi Order. And it takes him here to Kashyyyk. Um, and the Wookiees have been enslaved by the Empire, who's basically siphoning the planet for all its resources to uh, build up the uh, Imperial War Machine. Got it. All right, so I brought up my phone not to be rude. Okay. It wouldn't be Greg Miller if I didn't look at the Twitch chat. And yeah, they are all through with us talking. They'd like to see the game. We've gone on long enough. We're not going to drone. Let's do it. Vince, well, let's roll. Would you like to kick it off? Let's go. Yay, let's go. We're not evil. How many microtransactions is in this fucking game? Because they did it with Shadows of Mordor. Actually, I'm sorry. Who did Shadows of Mordor again? That wasn't EA. I think that was... Was that EA? I'm trying to think. I think that was EA. Holy shit. No, wait. Mm. Was that EA or Activision? Who cares? It was one. It was some of the evil companies out there. It was one of those. So this is the main menu. Okay. That's cool. They still had like a simplistic style menu from like Battlefront. They said this was three hours into the game. I have a feeling God Mode is put on, so... So we don't get a repeat of what uh, Final Fantasy 15 had. Because that was terrible. You have this little droid that's with you. That's nice. Does he... He... Does it... Fucking uh, give me like passive abilities? Okay, I'm pretty sure that wall that wall run feature is not gonna last for too long. Dude kinda looks like Leonardo DiCaprio. Am I crazy? It's not Leonardo DiCaprio, but he kinda looks like a young Leonardo DiCaprio. He got a real fucking Neanderthal forehead though, I'll tell you that much. What was his name again? Collins or something like that? Colin? Clarence? These refineries double as brutal prison camps. Use those cutters to create a distraction while you take your lightsaber and free the Wookiees inside. We need their help to stop the Empire. Understood. Watch yourself in there. You hear that? Said he needs my help. Come on, buddy. Okay. Free the Wookiees. So you do have maps and stuff, but I have a feeling that this game is going to be more linear than open world, which at this point in time, that doesn't bother me at all. 
I feel like we do need a couple more like focused linear games because there's too many games that are way too open world with like barren lands and nothing to do. Please don't tell me that's a fucking like tilt the analog stick balance feature because that will piss me off royally. Okay. Is there any stealth gameplay in this? Because if there is, that would be kind of interesting. Unnecessary double jump. Okay, force powers. By the way, for anyone who's thinking that I'm watching this at like uh, a low, um, a low quality, uh, this is just this is just the, <laughs> the video. Okay, that was cool. This is just the video itself. This is the highest quality I can watch it at. This is like 1080p. Oh, nice to see that they brought that back from uh, Force Awakens. The whole, like, stop the energy blast thing, because I constantly thought, why doesn't Kylo Ren do that shit all the time? Kill that fucking droid. Kill that droid. Kill that droid. Don't let it get away. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Dead. 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 Murder it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Aw, oh, too late. <laughs> Alright. So, the, it looks like the Force gameplay is gonna be kind of like the Force Unleashed, where, like, you can just really fuck with people, which is really good. Because of the first Force Unleashed was fucking awesome. It was great. I loved it. I loved every moment of it. And I've been waiting for another linear Star Wars game where I can just fuck with people with my Force powers. Skill points. There's skill points in the game. Who the fuck are you? Hey, look, you already got more screen time than Captain Phasma. Cool. Look at those fucking lightsaber marks and you're still alive. Oh shit. Damn, you getting fucked up. So the HUD seems very minimal, which is which is a good thing. I don't have to worry about it too much. You are getting fucked up. Oh my god. That was cool. Like I really hate saying something was cool in an EA press conference because I feel like somehow this game's gonna come out buggy as fuck. I really hope it doesn't. I really hope for once EA learns his lesson. All right, so the droid just gave him some sort of like item to get his health back. I'm not sure if that's on like a cooldown or if that's like a finite amount of items that you have to like buy from a shop or anything like that. What do they call them? Flame beetles? Oof. Clone Trooper got fucked up by a couple of fucking bugs. Flamethrower is going to be a pain in the ass to deal with. Or, unless you do that time freeze shit. Time freeze, what am I saying? Force freeze. So there's a lot of Kylo Ren type powers going on right now that I see. But. But I thought that those type of powers were for the dark side. But it seems not. Okay, Droid, I understand exactly what you're telling me, because you said beep boop. I love it. It's great. I love how the Droid is somehow the same level of cuteness as fucking uh, BB-8, 
but without having to like be on a ball the whole entire time like it has legs and it can climb by itself and shit it's already more useful than bb8 and fucking c3po and r2d2 Ugh, those giant ass beetle things you're probably gonna have to fight those Again, like I'm saying, I love this fucking linear progression. It gives more room for actual level design instead of, Hey, look at that rock. It's the same one as the rock over there. Ugh, I'm going to hate fighting these things. How much you want to bet there's going to be levels where uh, you're in a cave and these things just drop down on you like it's fucking Skyrim. Like, why? Like, why? Why was every motherfucking... Why does every game in existence need to have a spider enemy? Like, like, get out of get a fucking original idea. I'm sick and tired of spiders, man. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them so much. It pisses me off to no ends. I really hope I don't have to fight these things in dark areas. It would be it would piss me the fuck off. I will turn off my game and throw out my PlayStation 4. Or my PlayStation 5, or wherever the fuck this game comes out on. Oh, here's the dark area. How much you want to bet like five of those things jump down on them? Okay. Are these like secret echoes that you can find throughout the levels? Some kind of webbing in this dark cave. I think it might be a spider. Like that. Like I said, I called it. I fucking hate this game already. Again, why do you need spider enemies? I hope they only appear for this level. I really do. I really do, because fuck this bullshit. Like, come on, man. Nobody needs that. Come up with an enemy that isn't a fucking spider, jackass. It's called being original. If you can use that force power, why not just use it all the time? I would abuse the shit out of that power. I would basically be Dio from fucking JoJo. I'll just be like, mm, time stop. Mm, time stop. Is that a time stop, I see? What was that? I think that was a time stop. Stealth kill? Nope. So, so far, it seems like stealth does not exist in this game. You can do that. Is that a limited thing? Yep, it is. Okay. Yeah, like a bar that went down. Again, why wouldn't you abuse the shit out of that power? Oh, see, look at that. Fuck with people with your force powers. The best thing ever. Alright, this character is overpowered as shit. Like, even Starkiller didn't have this much power. Like, fuck off. Kylo Ren didn't have this much power. <laughs> so, I'm gonna assume this character dies at the end of this game. And if I'm right, then I'm sorry for spoiling it. Because there is no way that this motherfucker exists in the future. Oof. Pushed him off the fucking building. It's a lot to deal with. The lock-on feature seems kind of reliable. There is a dodge ability. That's cool. I like that you have a character with a lot of options and mobility. That's nice. And then again, you freeze them. You freeze them and you don't have to stay locked onto them. That's interesting. See, I thought you had to stay locked onto them the whole entire time. 
Why would you do that if it didn't work earlier? <laughs> so this is three hours into the game and you have this much power. The, like, you have so much powers and, like, mobility already. So this makes me think this is going to be, like, maybe a six to eight hour long game. Who are we going to see? I feel like we have to see some sort of like big name character show up. Like Darth Vader. We're going to see Darth Vader, aren't we? We're going to open that up and Darth Vader is going to be like... Hey, it's a Wookiee. Who's not Chewbacca. Oh, it's one of these droids. This is cool as shit. I love the, I love that dude from uh from uh what was it? What was it called? I can't remember. Rogue One. That fucking droid was like the highlight of that. Those guys seem like strong as fuck enemies. Okay, and then you fight the ATATs. All right. Is that an AT, at or is that an ATST? I can't remember. Xbox. What? Sponsored by Xbox? Or we'll see, we'll probably see more at the Xbox conference. That was good gameplay. I still feel like the game's going to come out broken. It's EA. I don't trust them anymore. I have a million questions and I know we're short on time as always. I want to point out though in the Twitch chat, Gwyn96 says that's freaking cool. But he didn't use freaking um, <laughs> how does it feel? To I just took a sip of my water. Right, like, you guys liked it, right? My throat was hella dry. I think I was looking at the Twitch chat. There's a lot of people who liked it. Like, what does that feel like to finally show this game? Oh, it's great. I mean, being involved with this. Oh, game the game's great. You know, we only been working on it for about like a year. So much of themselves into this game to be able to be involved in something like this is just, you know, dream come true. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, huge shout out to the team. Yeah. Um, everybody, Thanks, who guys. everybody who busted their butts on the uh, demo, but also the whole game. The whole game is coming together right now, so it's an amazing feeling. I'm just so proud. Of is you. the whole game coming together? Star Wars fans. When you mean the whole game is coming together right now, you mean crunch time. I mean, yes? From, you know, go ahead, clap. No, I'm going to stop you. <laughs> Whenever you want to clap for him, you clap for him. Uh, I think that's pretty evident from it, and I like when we intro you guys were talking about the fact that this is a skilled person playing it, right? We all see it, we think it looks awesome. What are we missing by not having our hands on the controllers? Like, what, 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 is the, what do the lightsabers feel like? Uh, I mean, it's fantastic, right? Yeah. Like, what? Because it looks like it's got weight to it and throwing it and catching it, right? Like, that's the impact I think I want from it. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's it's really satisfying. I mean, the game itself, it's like it's thoughtful combat, as Stig likes to call it. It's it's what you saw was a really good player. Yeah. Right. So you'll right over there again. He'll give out autographs. It's thoughtful player. combat. <laughs> so you can. Block, I parry, guess. Attack. Like we want the combat to feel really good for people to go in and be able to like be part of that and size up the enemies where when things feel right. And it's. It feels really good. Yeah, I guess, you know, thoughtful team. combat. It, it definitely doesn't seem like a hack and slash. How you go in and use your tools yeah. to take them down. Um, but it's not just lightsabers, it's, it's the force as well. Sure, well that's part of this. You were talking to me uh, last night about it, right? This thoughtful combat. And the idea that when I watched the demo initially, my thought was, oh, these are canned animations, right? I'm doing a, a force grab and stabbing the guy and that's all I hit R1 and that happened. That's not that way. No, it's all free form. So like you can go back in and replay things and do it differently or you and I would have different Absolutely, flavors. and actually the, the enemies react to each other in different ways. You saw the flame troopers fighting against the spiders. You could sit as a bystander and just kind of watch that fight if you wanted to. Yeah. But you're not going to get any skill points if you do that. <laughs> and it's not any fun either. It's fun to watch sometimes, but it is. it's a lot more fun to play. You talk about the skill points. Are those going into the force abilities? Yeah, so we're going to have the classic abilities. We're going to have push, pull. We've got what we call force flip, which is essentially double jump, nice. which is nice because that's something that makes sense in Star Wars, a Jedi actually doing a, <laughs> a double jump. Um, but we have one unique expression of the force that you saw in there, which is slow, which is a little bit of the glue between force push and pull. Yeah. Well, that was awesome. I think I, I thought you couldn't top my favorite moment in the demo, right? Where you come around the corner, grab the stormtrooper, force pull the stormtrooper, stab him. But when you force pull the stormtrooper and walk him into yes. the front pole, <laughs> that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. 
That's one of my favorite. I think the first time I saw that, I freaked out a little bit. No, you actually yeah. said it better be in the demo. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did it. You delivered. Uh, tell me about the enemies we are seeing there, right? Because that's one of those things I feel like we're talking a lot about seeing things about, a lot about is we're running through the environment. You had different things. You had your normal stormtroopers. You had non-normal stormtroopers. Yeah, and this is just a small portion of the game, by the way. So I'm just being quiet for most of this because I'm trying to get as much information as I can. <laughs> oh, man, I'm sorry if I'm, like, too quiet for some of you guys, but I'm pretty sure you guys probably want to hear them talk more than me. Uh, we've got the flame troopers, but we also have the purge troopers whose task is to uh, basically hunt Jedi, yeah. uh, soften them up before the Inquisitors come in. Um, and, and, like, we're seeing right here, right? Like, this, this is bad. That's the purge trooper. That's yeah. A, yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, purge so trooper. Okay. In, yeah. There you go. Adding to the Star Wars lore. What? We're pointing at one guy. Did he create it? Just that one man did? Yeah. <laughs> it was a team effort. You led the charge. Jordan did the concept. <laughs> Good job, Jordan. Everybody, Woo! reach out to Jordan. So we're that kid looked confused as yeah, all right. hell. He's like, why am I clapping? Favorite droids of all time coming back. The KX why are we talking about Minecraft? Yeah. Where's the Fortnite? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> oh, you do. No. Trust me, you do. I do? Yeah, right. yeah. Well, then, talk about the other star of this 15-minute demo, right? The new droid. BD1. There he is right there. No, BD1. BD1's in the audience, ladies and gentlemen. BD1, <laughs> that's what it's called. Thank you, BD1. Uh, he's adorable, as I'm sure you know. Uh, I immediately want him as a backpack, so just a heads up. If you're talking to anybody in the licensing department, that'd be All right. um, we can make What does happen. he do in the game, right? Excuse me, we're hosting a panel. <laughs> you can keep it down over there. What, what are the uh, traits? What are we using at? Is he just flair? Is, am I using him for different well, things? Like, story-wise, he, he's Cal's companion. He's yeah. an uh, explorer droid which is perfect because Cal's on this mission sure. for survival that's taken him to all these savage planets. Um, BD sounds for Buddy Droid 1, which is... Uh, that's, that's Respawn. That's yeah, respawn. I, mean, I don't think I didn't notice the wall running either. I'm like, well, yeah, Respawn oh, yeah. made this game. Yeah, okay. Definitely inspired by BT, <laughs> yeah. uh, but the name uh, ended up sticking. Yeah. So, uh, Wait, Respawn's uh, developing this? He's, he's, uh, his voice is authored by the legendary Ben Burt, oh, nice. um, who did all the sounds, sound, main sound designer in the original tr trilogy and yeah. gone. Um, but you can hack doors, computers, as we saw in there. Um, so I'm just you can scan enemies for information. Okay. Like environmental storytelling, learn more lore about the planet. I saw him shooting out health packs. Is yep. that a canned animation after a fight? Is it a button I'm hitting? It's player input. Okay. Uh, whenever like they cool want, on it? whenever they want, he will jack the stim pack. Okay. There's a limited amount that okay. you can find more over the course of the game. Um, okay, there's a limited amount. That's nice. I thought it was like on a cooldown. Okay. Um, we've talked. We've seen the gameplay. Without spoiling stuff for me, what's going on in the story? Like, obviously, Cal. And, yeah, I, I thought he was gonna be way weaker as a Jedi. You know, just uh, tell me the whole story. What, uh, a to B Stig, how's it going? Well, I just realized they said motherfucker was like Padawan level. He's already freezing people and shit. Is Watto in this game? <laughs> I can't say. <laughs> but that's not a no! <laughs> Hashtag Watto 2019. I'll be retweeting them all after this panel. Thank you very much. But what's going on in the story outside of Watto should be in it? Um, well, you know, story's a really big deal, deal to us. We created this with Lucasfilm. It's, we got to keep a really uh, tight lip on it. So I, I can't, I don't really want to go into it too far. Go Sorry. I mean, yeah, the, the story. going to save it. Okay. I know one of the things a lot of people have been asking, right? I put up uh, stuff on Instagram saying, hey, give me questions. Community wanted to know. This is Star Wars canon, right? You totally said, canon. Okay. Totally legit. Okay. This and the real Cal's So this game is canon to Star Wars, which essentially means nothing because within a year, everything becomes uncanon to Star Wars. So keep that in mind. Okay, that's great. Vince, how's that feel? No pressure. It feels great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have. Uh, you act like it's so nonchalant. Are, You're making a Star Wars game. It's canon. No, it's not nonchalant at all. It's amazing. Like I said, I'm just like shocked to be up here. I'm like. I know it's a big yeah. deal to work with me, but it's okay. Uh -huh. be okay. We've been talking about this for like ten years. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, the other big community question I've seen a lot is, it's a Star Wars game, and Star Wars games in the past have allowed us to go light or dark. Is that a choice here? No. Okay. Well. <laughs> Why not? Because. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's, it goes back to the fact that Cal's authentic, yeah. and um, he has to 
fill a certain role so we can be used in other places. Yeah, this is a Jedi story. Well, that's the thing I appreciate the most, that you guys are coming in and telling a story, right? Like, I think that's why so many of us are excited for it, is the idea that this is a Star Wars story, that you guys have something to tell. That's good. I like that idea. I like, again, like I said, we need more, like, linear story. Linear games that told that tell bigger stories like there's too many games that give you too many freedoms and at the end of the day the uh the cho like the freedom of your choice or whatever but like it feels like it doesn't mean anything at the end of the day because eventually you're gonna have to probably write a fucking sequel to it or something like that so it's nice to have a game that's like this is a character you are not the character you are playing as a character which is good Tomorrow. That's right. Vince Steak, thank you so much for coming out. November 15th. So they just said they're going to show off more at the Microsoft conference tomorrow. So that's that's interesting. Okay. Well, I say tomorrow, but for me, it's later today because I'm watching this like 4 o'clock in the morning. We'll stay tuned for Apex Legends. Yeah. What do you mean, stay tuned? Thank you for the yeah. I was like, that's the corniest joke I put in this thing. No one's gonna laugh. Everybody They're gonna take like a break. For watching. We got more. EA play for you now. So they're gonna take a break and come back. Is that what's happening? How hyped are we for Star Wars? Okay. Oh man, this is fucking cancerous to watch already. I'm gonna just skip ahead. That's the beauty of watching this. Oh man. So I'm just gonna cut ahead until, you know, when the shit's ready. Okay, so we are back now, and they're about to start talking about Apex Legends Season 2. Me, personally, I have barely played Apex Legends, mainly because I don't have people to play with, and the people I want to play with, either they want to play Blackout on Black Ops 4, or they don't like Battle Royale anymore, or something like that, I don't know. But, I did play Apex Legends for a little bit, it was fun. Welcome to EA Play 2019, and I'm so excited to talk about Apex Legends here at EA Play. I'm professional esports commentator Alex Goldenboy Mendez. Esports commentator, oh my fucking god, I want to kill myself right now. <laughs> no offense to esports people, but god damn it, dude. You know what? I shouldn't even talk because I love watching Evo, but I just hate. The uh, I just hate the commentators on those things. I just want to watch the matches. All right, I'm just moving the wires for my microphone because I keep hitting them. All right, so apparently they have a new playable character coming up. For response community manager Jay for as you can see, we brought Kings Canyon to life right here at EA Play. We've even got all nine current legends here to help me bring you some of the season two updates that you've been clamoring for. We're going to introduce you to our newest legend after the show, but for those of you at home, don't miss your chance to jump into our legendary hunt event. Check it out. I'm sorry, was that the legend we just saw right now? Yeah. Is that a girl? Is that a female? The legendary hunt has begun. Legends can compete to enter an all new Apex Elite queue. Complete challenges for exclusive cosmetics. I could do this all day. Earn XP and battle pass boosts. Is there a single player mode for me? Skins in the in-game store. Only the strong Vilvina and Slatra. For a limited time, legends who place in the top five of any match will earn the right to join the Apex Elite queue. I need some help over here. Solid copy. There, they will have the opportunity to test their skills I need some ammo. against the most talented legends in the game. One more. The legend's true test is from within them. Additionally, legends can complete legendary hunt challenges to earn rewards like the epic Master of the Hunt Bloodhound, the Wolfpack G7, Not your day. I won this one. and hunt down two wins to score the exclusive legendary Tamed Beast Triple Take. 
trust in the gods and you shall be rewarded. Opening fire. Got him. Are you telling me those those skins are only available for people who get into the queue? Because if they are, that kind of sucks. And you're taking like most of your player base and just saying like fuck off. Come find me. Every day, legends can also earn an entire battle pass level for your first top 5 finish of the day. Thank you for the fun fight. And we're doubling down. Okay. All right, there you go. At least you're not forgetting about the rest of the player base. Again, I don't play Apex uh, Legends that much. If they had like a single player mode, not like single player mode, what I'm saying. If they gave me like a free for all type mode for like the Battle Royale stuff, I would probably play it more. I just don't have like a team of people to play this with. Uh, and I honestly, I'd rather not play with random people. Um, but yeah, this. I'm happy. Like, hell, I don't even play it that much, and I'm excited for this shit. That's right, until June 18th, you can jump into uh, the Legendary Hunt, our limited time event that features the debut of our Elite Q, exclusive challenges you can unlock, and some killer skins and more. Also, this weekend is double XP weekend, so there's lots of great reasons to jump in. The community really brought it since this event launched, and it's awesome to see the best duke it out. <laughs> I just realized they're all posing in the background and shit. <laughs> what the fuck? All right, that was season one. He's ready to talk about season two. I like that. So, you know, I, listen, I play this game every day. It, it's one of my favorites. And I did this like right before the show started. Oh, man, you play this game every day, you say. Uh, you know, I'm going to jump back. For some reason, I do not believe you. I do want to talk about season two. We've got the first details here. And joining me, we got Drew McCoy in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Drew, we've been so patient for that beautiful, beautiful content. What do you have for us today? Well, it's coming. Okay. First and foremost. Content is coming. Tonight. Okay, I was confused. I was like, his microphone isn't on. Somebody help him. July 2nd, and it's called Battle Charge. All right. So Battle Charge will be coming out. What can we expect, though, when this new season drops? Yeah, so as we announced when uh, we launched the game, we're taking a seasonal approach. So we're trying to cram as much into the launch of Season 2 as possible with some other stuff along the way. But what you can expect uh, from the launch is a new legend, a new weapon, a new way to play the game. Okay. Perhaps a map event. Uh, and a lot of this has been done through a lot of the feedback from community. Uh, we're also changing up some of the meta balance of weapons to try and buff up some of the weaker weapons uh, and bring a lot of cool Bump up some of the weaker okay. weapons. All right. Mozambique, here. We're going to talk about a good. I don't want a Mozambique. Give me my wingman. Sweet new content because season two is bringing a new weapon to the fight. And today, we're excited to show it to you. So let's just go ahead, roll the clip. A new weapon is called the Booty Blaster. They usually carry rare platforms. Elf down here. I am taking fire, friends. I bathe in the blue. Your ignorance meets your end. So that's the new weapon they're using? The L-Star, fully auto-fire, gold weapon rarity, so it's like a really good weapon. Okay. Ugh, what is the reload time on that? Well, there it is. <laughs> God damn, you got range. Star, man, I remember getting slapped by this gun in Titanfall too. So pretty excited to see this one make it into the fold in the arena. Seems really Oh, so it used to be a gun in Titanfall too. Okay. The only thing in Titanfall 2 I ever saw personally was the campaign, which was awesome as fuck. So yeah. Uh, it's okay. just amazing. Just but, like uh, that out front. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, it's like the master for the Kraber. It's, uh, it's incredibly powerful. Yeah. Uh, and being a uh, care package weapon, it doesn't use any of the existing ammo on the ground, so whatever you get with it is what you got. I also noticed, too, it shattered through doors. Yeah, it can open doors. So, like, yeah. melees, grenades, and now the L-Star. Wow. Okay, so that is pretty sizable. Now, 
Uh, what other changes are going to be coming to weapons? Because I, and this may seem very nerdy, but I'm a huge fan of hop-ups. I'm all about Prowler with my, with my switch fire. That's, that's my jam. Yep. What are you bringing me? Yeah, so like I mentioned, there's going to be some meta changes to the weapons. We're trying to bring up some of the uh, weaker weapons. Um, and then, yeah, there are two new hop-ups coming. Uh, not really going to say what they are yet. You guys got to wait for season two. But uh, there is a chance that uh, maybe a memeable weapon named after an African country is usable. Is usable? Yeah. OK. Perhaps. All right, perhaps. I mean, that is yet to be seen. We'll yeah. <laughs> have to see if that's going to be a reality. All right, cool. So we're starting out hot with that L-Star light machine gun. Uh, we also have the battle pass. and. You know, when you guys first spoke about the Battle Pass, you said that it was a learning experience. What's different this time around for Season 2? Yeah, so we've been uh, listening to the community a lot. Season 1 didn't quite launch as well as we were hoping. Uh, the content was fairly underwhelming for players, so we've been taking that in. We've been uh, getting all sorts of data from uh, people buying skins to what they equip on their characters or weapons. Um, and so we've, we've, we've taken this learning and put it in a Season 2 Battle Pass. Um, so first off of that, it's challenge-based now instead of essentially um, uh, time-based. So uh, you'll get daily and weekly challenges, and they stack if you don't play for a while. So you can come back after a month and uh, try and knock them all out on a weekend and level up really quick. Uh, ultimately, this does mean leveling to level 100 is a lot quicker than in Season 1. Um, we're also getting rid of all the uh, badges and strat tra stat trackers, taking up space throughout the leveling process. Uh, and we are inserting three new, entirely new content types into the Battle Pass, which we will talk about later. Um, and there's a lot more skins in it, and uh, there's going to be enough crafting medals by the time you hit level 100 to craft your very own legendary of your choosing. All right. I like that. Yeah. I love how I'm paying attention to all this shit. Meanwhile, I barely play this game because it all sounds really interesting. Talking about Apex, it's got some pretty sick skins. What skins do you have for me today? Yeah, so like I mentioned, um, I think our skin game is... Yeah, skins! Skins. You can see that with, uh, I'll fucking... Skin I'll skin cut skin a motherfucker for a new skin. Uh, but we got um, four legendary skins in the Battle Pass. So we have two character and two weapon. So for Caustic, he's got the Prince of Darkness skin. Uh, and for Octane, we're doing the Jade Tiger. Oh, I think we're... Yeah, you can see there's uh, Prince of Darkness right there. Uh, and then... Uh, I don't like the mask on that. For the Spitfire called the Intimidator. Uh, and that gun looks one, fucking hot. Two skins, that's a great skin. So the Iron Rampage at level 100. Okay. Iron Rampage. Oh, that's such a great name. Oh, look at that. Ooh. Ooh, looks like it came straight out of Berserk. Ew, look at that. That's gross. They're just dying to have answered. Uh, new ways to play. Elite Q was awesome. Yep. I think we just did that. Like one of the cool oh, my dogs are waking up now. What else? They're flapping yeah, so their ears around. Designed Apex Legends, we really wanted it to have kind of a competitive core to it. This is a game that's meant to be played over hundreds of hours and mastered. Really deep learning experience. Um, and so the Elite Q is our first step towards getting to a higher competitive state. Hey, okay. and so stop scratching into my bed over there, asshole. Really stoked to announce. Stop it. We have a ranked mode coming. Rank mode. Yeah. All right. They have a rank mode so now? That's awesome. Mode, uh, you'll progress through uh, six tiers if you're good enough. Uh, you will cap out if you are garbage tier like myself. Yeah. Um, Don't worry. We'll be in wood division together. Yeah, you and me, buddy. Yeah, that's wood. what's up. Yeah, you and me. We'll play together. Never. Yeah, we'll together. Uh, yeah, so it goes from bronze all the way up to apex predator, and it's using... Um, uh, special matchmaking for each of the tiers. So the higher you get, you'll probably have some longer matchmaking times, but it's because we're trying to find the best possible match for you. And then uh, throughout the season, you'll be... Well, it's nice that they say that out then, uh, front, that like, season, you'll get rewards that where you end. the better you are, so since we're trying to actually do it correctly, you might have longer loader times. It's gonna be awesome. That's sick. All right. All right. It's nice for them to explain that for you right now, instead of people like start losing their shit later. I can't wait. Uh, I, I am legitimately concerned, as I mentioned, Either it be the first wood division player, which isn't even in it, or plastic division. Plastic's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, so that's, that, that's going to hurt. Uh, but, dude, I, thank you so much for sharing all these details, man. Yeah, guys, Drew, ladies and gentlemen, from the respawn team. Wait, right, I thought they were revealing a new legend. I, I'm a lifeline main. Just fact. Man. You are, too. Yep. Respect that. Any lifeline mains in the house? Lifeline legend is what they call their champions right. in that game, right? That might They're champions. The They're playable house. characters? That's right, because Jay... Give the people what they want. We want to know who is the 10th legend. Okay, there you go. That's what I want to say. It's my pleasure, Golden Boy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the moment has arrived. The 10th legend joining the Apex Legends Arena is... Watson! 
Watson. Oh, cool. To help us get to know our latest legend, is she Russian? Team put together this touching illustrated short. Let's check it out. All right, I'm gonna shut up for this one. As I write this letter, it's the middle of the night in late summer. An hour ago, you cracked the equations necessary to power the force field. You showed me up tonight, my magnificent daughter. And I couldn't be happier or prouder of that. I always knew you were special. But never did I fathom that the little girl who taught her stuffed Nacy multiplication tables would grow up to master quantum laser mechanics. I have assured the syndicate that the modified containment force field will be operational in a month's time, and it's all thanks to you. I may be just a doddering old fool trying to hold on to Mumbi Bay a little while longer before he loses her to a daughter. But I do see you. I see the strong, brilliant, wonderful young woman you've become. And I know when the day comes that I'm no longer with you, you are going to be just fine. The games will be brilliant because you are brilliant. My daughter can and will do anything she wants in this life. Because she's the smartest woman in the frontier. Je t'aime de tout mon cœur. Pour toujours. Papa. I did it, Papa. I hope wherever you are, you're cheering for me. I did it, Papa. <laughs> that was a nice little sweet thing that they did. Gentlemen, Watson joining the arena. And joining me now, we have the three gentlemen who brought her to life. Griffin, Will, and Tom, thank you so much for joining us here. Wow. So that, that I mean, Bible thumps in the chat, man, because that was just, that was just, that was the feels right there. Hit me right, right in the feels. Um, but Griffin, we'll, we'll start with you, bud. Uh, you're one of the legend designers, and I'm curious on the approach that you guys took toward making Watson a character that has impact in mm -hmm. the arena. So uh, Watson really started as uh, a conversation between a friend of mine and I who, he's an engineer and he has this really methodical, interesting way of uh, taking really complex problems and systematically solving them. And so... Is that a barrier? Thought, what would it be like if we took uh, the, the sort of the defensive complexity of, of Apex and introduced a character that could really... That is a barrier. Uh, Holy shit. ...create a, an ecosystem in which you can survive the really aggressive um, third-party meta, all of that stuff. So the, the idea behind Watson really is that if you, if you plan and you sort of adapt to the environment, you really know the map and you work closely with your team that you can really... Um, create these strong defenses that uh, that people are going to really have to think about in terms of how yeah. they push on you and that sort of thing. So the, the current meta of um, I, I hear gunfire and I hit it as hard as I can, you know, with Bangalore, Wraith, Octane, um, all, all of those, we're, we're trying to sort of bump that meta a little bit and uh, make it so that uh, this this more stanced RTS kind of play style has breathing a uh, breathing room. Yeah, you, uh, yeah. you try to provide like options for the players. Holy yeah, shit! Want to be able to play that yeah. hyper aggressive? That's a lot of defensive like, options going on right like, there. What the fuck? Contains like a typical one, which would be like a Pathfinder, Wraith, and a lifeline for that support. Yeah. You can you can play into yeah. a composition like this, and they kind of counter yeah. one another. So that that's that's gonna be really fun. And we're gonna dive into the abilities and everything uh, that she does. Cause let me tell you. It's insane. Uh, now, as far as the look and feel, my favorite part about Apex, Le Apex Legends is that the characters, the legends themselves, they stand out. When you're looking from far away, you see the silhouette and you know exactly who it is that you're about to engage with. What were some of the complexities in bringing a character like Watson to life? Uh, yeah, so it's a collaborative effort. You know, yeah. Shout out Heath and Sam, animation department. Everybody kind of works together. Uh, we were given a specific set of skills that she would be using, abilities from Griffin, and that's kind of all we had to go off of. Um, so we had to, Heath did a great job of like bringing it all together, giving her a sort of a grounded aesthetic using, she had to look like she was using electricity and stuff like that, so rubber gloves and the coils and the wires and uh, pushing her silhouette at the same time, making her stand. You have to be able to read who she is from different distances. 
Uh, from there, <laughs> um, from there, uh, you can really go in and sculpt all the details out and work with the animators to really bring her to life, give her personality in everything that she does with her abilities and that too. So. Yeah, and there's some really cool stuff there as well. Every every part that Watson she she takes out an item in in her kit, it's actually like on her person. Oh yeah, you see it happen. Yeah, and those are all very meticulously designed by the concept artist and then and then modeled out in 3D. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's all functional. That's crazy. In the in the world. Yeah. So now you, you get to the to the gameplay, the look, but the story, you know, because you got to hit us in the feels, right? Like super hard, and you just did that. Uh, Watson's backstory, who she is. Let, let's let's dive deeper into that one, Tom. Kind of different from the way we usually do things because usually it's very collaborative and we're creating the character at the same time, all the different departments, and we're working together. Uh, Watson was different. She was already designed and and drawn uh, when I got her. And one of the great things about working at Respawn is is they they encourage us to, to create characters that are non traditional and that are characters you haven't seen in video games before, and to kind of branch out and see what else you know what other kind of people can we represent out there and. Uh, so Watson is a very different character than I've ever seen in a video game, at least. Uh, and everything is, is based off of what these guys created. I mean, it's all, every single part of her backstory is connected somehow to either her abilities or her look. And now, it was something that kind of stuck out to me. So am I correct in assuming that Watson played a big role in the arena itself? Yes, so Watson and her father actually invented the ring. Okay. Uh, and so she grew up. Uh, in the arena, literally in the arena when, when they were building it. Uh, and we're going to start to, you're going to see with uh, Watson and moving forward, we're going to start to build the lore of this world a little bit. Uh, you're going to find out who created the games. They mentioned the syndicate in there, so we'll talk about the syndicate down the road. Uh, you're, you're starting to build more and more uh, of, a, of a universe, yeah, which is great. So, so she's in the arena, so all the legends must know her. Oh, yeah. She was their kid sister, basically. She was always hanging around the arena, and she got to know all the legends and got to watch all of them. She's not a mercenary. She's not a soldier. Uh, you know, she, her role is of support. And so uh, she, she, everybody loves Watson. She's the one person that could probably unite all the legends together. Including Caustic. Caustic respects her. She's a scientist. Okay. She's an engineer. Okay. Uh, I like the strong word for Caustic. Yeah. I don't know if Caustic likes anybody. Okay. He likes that's, that. fair. Yeah. that's fair. That's uh, fair. Well, yeah. That's super <laughs> cool. I, I mean, blown away by this character so far. Now, I mentioned before we're going to talk about the abilities uh, because when you revealed these to me, I was floored, jaw dropping. And a lot of people online were kind of like guessing mm -hmm. as to like what it would be. And I'm very happy to see that a lot of them, some, some had the right idea, but for the most part, uh, what she's capable of doing is ridiculous. So let, let's just talk about uh, the act of first thing, defenses. I just hope those fucking rods she put down aren't like unlimited. Any other current character we have, you really need to understand how they Oof. interact. The uh, fences, you can place 12 nodes, and uh, you can use these in any permutation you want. Part of why 12? We sort of, uh, went with That's gonna have to get nerfed. Because we really to reinforce both I don't even play this game, and I think that shit's gonna get nerfed. The player can be with these. Um, basically, we're just giving you free reign to place these however you want and figure out And the, the, and the players, they, like, I just saw right there, I don't know if that was intentional. So the, when the, your teammates go through, it shuts yeah, down. It so shuts off. So if I'm down... Mm -hmm. And they run through the gate. Does the gate deactivate? Yes. Oh. Yeah. So there's a lot of different interactions, a lot of different ways that you can uh, interact with the gates with other characters. Uh, the ultimate is, uh, we call it an interception pylon. It shoots down bombardments, incoming grenades, uh, stops arc star spam. Um, and it charges your team's shield. And it also, if uh, Watson's cooldown is slower when she's away from the pylon, but when you're near the pylon, it supercharges your... your Tactical, so you get fences faster. So if you drop it down, it's uh, it's a it's a permanent structure until it's destroyed, and uh, that allows you to build uh, these large. That's like fucking. Uh, rapidly. You can use that for defending, for flank control. That's kind of like Lucio in like Overwatch, the and then the where like someone will use their ultimate, and then you use that, and it just completely negates it. Ultimate charge, and so if you save up. 
uh, ultimate accelerants over the course of the match. That allows you to place more pylons, and it means that you don't have to play conservatively as Watson as long as you save up ultimate charges. You can keep moving with a, with a highly mobile squad. You can play offense, defense, support, however you feel like the fences and the pylon are, are most effective to whatever comp you're playing. So what you're telling me here is that lifeline mains do not need to continuously hold ultimate accelerants anymore. We, that was, that was, we felt like we needed to... Rejoice! That's right. We did it, people. Finally, because everyone's like really mean to me if I don't like use the old Excel. It's not, it's not fair. Oh wow! So that is that is that is ridiculous. Also uh, the, uh, when they cross the fences, you get pinged as well. Oh yeah. So yeah. if any enemies cross through the, pens, uh, the fences, it pings your entire squad. So there's a, 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 a situational awareness element to them as well. Wow. Um, so if you know, so that's, that's a lot, lot of fucking right. shit to get one character. Point. Holy shit. You can set up fences yeah. there and you'll know exactly when an enemy yeah. crosses. Yeah. I'm even thinking about like compositions and how like it could work out. You know, maybe for any Gibraltar mains out there, maybe you find a little, uh, no one cheered for that. Feels bad, man. Uh, <laughs> maybe there's like a little little synergy there that, that can, can, can mm -hmm. be created. There, there's a yeah. lot that can be done with these fences and being yeah. able to block off certain chokes. Yeah, it's. It, I think it's really the big... Oh man, I didn't even think about fucking choke points in that game. Holy shit! Character is so overpowered. That character is going to get nerfed like a motherfucker. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's too much power. Really, like, when a player saw him, they knew they knew exactly what it was. Not to kind of catch him off guard, so to speak. To make it really, really stand out. Yeah, again, silhouettes everything. You gotta make it stand out. And it has to Not only that that character has too much power, but that's going to be, like, the top target more than a fucking lifeline. Pull it out and... Uh, she's able to bring it out and, you know, create a, uh, create a fortress, basically. And it has to read. So uh, we had concept artists working on every little detail and the modelers as well. And we had to test it out. We, had, we tested it out. We played in-game or in-house and uh, make sure it reads well. And these guys do a tremendous job of it, too. I'm like, I, I need, like, a post with electricity that goes between the two. Yeah. And they just, they create really cool stuff with just that kind of... Holy shit. Maybe. How yeah. long is this conference? Oh, my God. It feels like they've been going on forever because it's just, like, one big talk show. But, like, it's only been, like, almost an hour. It's only been, like, 50 minutes or something. Very much looking forward. Now, today, we've covered a bunch here. We've seen a new weapon. We've gotten a new mode, the latest legend, and the new battle pass for season two. So let's recap all the amazing Apex Legends action that we've seen here today. Surprise. Care package touching down. Like a deer in the headlights. I'm not gonna let you off that easy, Drew. What was that? What was what? What, what was that? You saw the giant thing on the screen in the eyeball. What was that? Can't, All right. can't but, tell me. Well, let's just say that. Well, well, no. But let's just say this. We got a, perhaps a couple of big things coming into Kings Canyon at the start of season two. Okay. So keep your eyes peeled over the next month. See what you can find out. So if I were to like ask you, you know, after we're done with this, are you like gonna give me the cold shoulder? Are you actually gonna tell me? Uh, there's no way I can tell you. Sorry. Yo, man, I'm Sorry. just holding L's all day out here, man. This is not, this is not fair. Well, Drew, thank you so much, man. Guys, that was the most cringiest interaction I ever saw in my life. July 2nd could not get here soon enough. Now, if you're in Los Angeles, come check out Apex Legends at EA Play for your first chance to get hands-on with Watson, as well as all the other great Apex Legends things happening here. And for those of you at Next home, up, Battlefield 5. Can I just right skip now, that because nobody cares? Because that game was fucking bad. I'm Golden Boy. It's been a blast talking Apex Legends with you all here today. And I'll see you in the arena. Peace. All right, time for another break. Honestly, I think I need it. <laughs> Cause that was, uh, oh my god, oh my god, is this all they're showing? Is Battlefield? Then FIFA? I am going to skip FIFA. I am going to skip Madden. There is no way I am watching that. I don't give a fuck. And then The Sims 4, which hopefully. They add like a million shit to that because 
fuck it. Sims 4 is an expensive ass game. I don't even play the Sims 4. Like, come on. Ain't even expensive as fuck. Well, anyways, yet again, when we come back, we're going to see, uh, oh my god. Oh my god, that's a lot of time. Oh my god, when we come back, we're gonna see, uh, some, uh, some Battlefield 5. I'm not lying, I'm going to skip FIFA and Madden. That shit will not be on my channel. So if you want to go watch that, go somewhere else. And then we're going to watch The Sims 4, because I don't have time for this shit. Well, I'll see you guys in a bit then. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. They're about to talk about Battlefield 5. I honestly don't even know why I'm recording this, because that game was bad, and there's no way they are saving that game. Man. I've only been here for like an hour and it feels like I've been sitting here for fucking like three hours. Hey guys! Hey, welcome to the Battlefield 5 show live from EA Play in Hollywood! Let's hear it! I'm Giuliani and today we've got a ton of new info on some of the great updates coming to Battlefield 5 in 2019. But don't just take my word for it. My co-host, he reads all of your tweets and I do actually mean all of them. It's a little bit creepy and weird. <laughs> Battlefield community manager Adam Freeman. What have you got for us, Freeman? Oh, thanks, Julia. Um, now, I may be a member of the Battlefield team, but as you know, I'm a fan. I know you guys are a fan too. And you're gonna I'm a fan to and I like money. Half hour. We're going to be bringing you content that's coming to you over the next few months. We've heard what you want, so you, today you're getting your first look at a time. We heard what you want, and what you've all said is you wanted a better game. We are here to tell you that we cannot deliver a better game. So go play Call of Duty. <laughs> oh, I'm just joking. But seriously, that game was bad. Thanks, Adam. That's right. Let's wait no longer and tear the plastic off our first new map, Marita. Let's check it out. That looks beautiful. On the Marita map, Allied forces are making a last stand to halt the Axis army sweeping through the region. Again, I haven't seen anything about Battlefield 5 since it came out, so I'm not even sure if the game's better or not. You'll deploy on a sloping mountain ridge and within the tight streets of a rural town. I do have a friend that does play this game all the goddamn time though. So maybe I'll ask them, maybe they'll show me a little bit of something something. And I'll see if the game actually got better. But all I know is when this game came out, it was, it was fucking bad. I'm about to take my head, my headphones off for a bit. It's starting to hurt my ears a bit. All that pressure going to my head. Hills and multi-story homes means unique vertical gameplay. Stay alert in this steep environment as the Battle of Greece rages on. Dude missed like every shot with that sniper. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Get your aim straight. I shouldn't even be talking. My aim sucks. Yeah. So thanks for coming out, Ron. So obviously Marita looks amazing. What was the map's inspiration? Well, I think um, the, you know the team in, in, in LA that put this together, and they built the the Mercury map. I'm about to drink some more water because I'm thirsty as fuck. So they really want to continue that story of the Battle of Greece, which is a bit of an unknown story, new, new to me as well uh, as, you, as you learn about this stuff. So it's really cool. It's sort of set um, on the Albanian Greece border, sort of in the mountains there, where the uh, the Axis powers sort of started to push into Greece during the war, uh, and it's sort of set above the clouds in this nice little quiet, well, I guess what used to be quiet village. Yeah. Where, uh, <laughs> Before these guys all show up, and uh, it's, it's quite a different experience than Mercury. It's sort of um, a totally different style of gameplay that you would have seen in the game before. So, what kind of gameplay are we talking about? What's happening? Well, so this is going to be a, a heavily infantry-focused map. So, uh, as Mr. Battlefield likes to put it, this is total creative chaos. So you're just going to see I some love that. Oh. <laughs> creative chaos. Yeah. 
So what we get there is just head-on, just collisions in the middle of this map, and it's it's sort of a, what we try to do with all the new maps that we've created, spending a lot of time to figure out how do we make each one of them different. Okay, so, so are you map. trying to say it's that there's less the emphasis on, on vehicles in this map? Has, um, I guess for lack of a better way of putting it, it's sort of a banana shape to it, uh, and that banana shape. Like well, I think fruit's important when you're doing uh, game design, I think, um, <laughs> obviously. And so the shape gives you sort of a variety of different play styles and sort of creates this sort of narrow channels for people to just run head on into each other, which really creates that, that chaos that is Battlefield. But it, That's it gives what we want, though. That's what we want, that kind of chaos. But most importantly, we need to know, like, we can talk all days, but when can we get our hands on it? That's what we want to know, right? Yeah, and I think the great thing for this... this God is damn, lady, you're just, like, interrupting the fuck out of him. Holy shit. I think some people are going to get to play Let him talk. Lucky you. All right, Freeman, who's, uh, we've stuck up there for... Let him talk so he can get the fuck off the stage. ...has more on Chapter 4 for you. Over to you, Freeman. I'm up here PTFO, and I don't want you giving out to me, Julia. Listen, we have more maps. So let's deliver a brand new one to you. This is Al Sundan. It's coming in Chapter 4. To another map. The fight moves to the North African desert in a vast new map of Battlefield 5. Al Sundan. Prepare to engage. A that looks nice. I like the look of this better than the other one. Axis forces have militarized the area with camps, a radar the, and an air base. It's it's very fight over possession of these critical points. Oh. In Al Sundan, For a desert, it's like very green. But I like it though. With this, the location has been optimized for all-out multiplayer action. On this open map, it's up to you to shape the fight. With large distances, vehicle-based team play, and battles across ranges, you'll always... So the other map has less emphasis on vehicles because they want that head-on confrontation going on. But this map is way bigger, so vehicles are... There's going to be a hell of a lot of uh, problems. Yeah, like that. Yeah, like that. Fast-paced infantry battles in tight interior areas. Al Sundan is classic battlefield. We can't wait to let you play it. Does anyone really play Battlefield to win the game, or do you just play it to just fuck shit up? Because I think people just play it to fuck shit up. Even I do that. Well, I did that with Battlefield 4. Yeah, so usually, Even yeah, though it wasn't that a, great of a game sort of either. Focus on building these war stories. They want to create these nice narrative, linear experiences mm. and sort of that really tell the story of, of World War II. Um, but with, um, with Under No Fly, they sort of took a little bit of a different approach to this and sort of made this big, wide open experience. Uh, and, and that showed a lot of p potential from a multiplayer uh, perspective as well. So when we finished the game originally, the team wanted to sort of sit down and, and, and sort of a small group of them and take a shot at turning this into uh, what could be an amazing it's battlefield. Right. It's, it's, it's huge. This is a really right. big map. This is your sort of classic battlefield sandbox yeah. map. This is where you're going to see, you know, tanks and planes and infantry yep. and all of that. There you go, all those what vehicles. Is, what is truly battlefield. Um, a big uh, old heavy emphasis on those vehicles. Depending on no matter how you want to play, there's something there for you. Yeah, oh, definitely. And uh, so how do cars... Emphasis. Emphasis. However the hell you want to pronounce that word. You say it enough times, it doesn't make any sense anymore. You've got, you know, when you go into the village, it's all about infantry play and speed and flanking through the things. And uh, the bridge in the middle, it's all about, you know, sort of controlling that with infantry gameplay. And I think Mr. Battlefield the other day decided to just sit there with his tank and <laughs> destroy me. But um, that's, it's just something that he likes to do. He's kind of mean, but oh. he's not mean. He's super <laughs> nice. But, uh, no, but most importantly, I mean, again, we could go on and on and on. We're tight for time because there's so much to get through. We've got so many announcements. When yes, you are. We are tight for time, please. We are tight for time because we want to talk about FIFA and Madden, which I will skip over because I'm not wasting my time anymore with that shit. It's enough that I have to waste my time with fucking Forza every year at Microsoft's bullshit. Get up close and personal. With Chapter 4 defying the odds, new and intense close quarter maps are coming to Battlefield 5. By popular demand, okay. bringing more maps to players craving tighter types of multiplayer, especially tailored for intimate infantry. Combat. Again, I I want to see um. Challenge your squad. I guess I'll have to get in contact with uh. Teamwork, skill, and adaptation. With uh, with my friend who plays this shit all the time, and maybe ask him like, is it actually time to really get into Battlefield Five? 
because again when it came out it was like a really bad game and matchmaking was fucking terrible and the game was just really like kind of broken prepare to assemble your team and rise above your enemies and prepare to learn more about these new battlefields later in the year all right so i guess they're wrapping up the battlefield 5 stuff now because if they are, then that was actually really short. Now, to help us break down these new maps, Ryan and I are joined by Miss... Never mind, they're going to talk more about it. God damn it. I can feel my fucking legs going on from sitting here for so long. Because he asked nicely, we also let Freeman come down from his weird place up there. You're worse than my Firestorm teammates. You just leave me behind everywhere. But we can all understand why that happens. Do you want to take over this one for sure. the start? Sure, don't mind if I do. Yeah, yeah, go for um, it. Lars, these are very different then to the two maps we've already shown so far today. Tell us about them. They are. I mean, taking a step back, we've been... <laughs> I look at this guy and I just remember what happened last year. We all know what you've been waiting for. Battle Royale. Boo! <laughs> oh, man. That was hilarious as fuck. Motherfucker nodded his head and said, mm hmm. Battle Royale. <laughs> it was so stupid. Everybody was like, boo. You boo at your own stage, motherfucker. We're making that platoon when we get back. Oh man, that shit was hilarious. You know, as we see with these smaller game modes, I mean, the key to this is just really good team play, really good squad play. And so, you know, sticking together and not leaving anybody behind, like Mr. Freeman over here. Unless you I mean, what if you want to leave him behind, can you? Then it's acceptable. Because I would. It's too beautiful, man. It'd just be a spinning number play. It would be, yeah. yeah. As you saw, God damn it. The just let them talk about the fucking game. Kind of open where the <laughs> Constantly interrupting them. Holy shit. And factory equipment. Not even asking any questions. Yeah. You're yeah. just like, inter who the fuck are you? Stop destroying but places you want to take your family. It's okay. weird. I'll take Ryan. Yeah, take him instead. And then go who the hell is that guy? Motherfucker well, popped up in the background like a goddamn fucking meerkat. Like a fucking weasel. I mean, again, you could go on and on to about all of these maps, but uh, we've got one more map to show off, and I want to make sure we have time to get through it. Uh, but first, uh, Lars, you brought with him some news about some kind of core gameplay updates we know that you've all been waiting for, so uh, you're excited about this. Yes, Battle Royale. Mm -hmm. I mean, just Battlefield or... <laughs> Let's not delve. Big community features we've announced this month. Increase the max rank. Private games. <laughs> Let's talk max rank. What can you Let's tell talk us? max rank. We do know, and it's been loudly uh, made to us, our kind of awareness that there are players out there too skilled who maxed out on rank 50 too quickly. So we've taken that to heart, and we've now taken the max rank from 50 to 500. So it's quite a leap. Yeah. Max rank from 50 to 500. That sounds like... Is that something to really clap about? That sounds fucking terrible. We want the goodies. So to start with, already from rank 51, yeah, you will be granted company coins for every rank up. But then at every, do we call them milestone ranks, you know, every 50th rank, you will get one shiny new rank icon to show off your skills and also a beautiful set of dog tags. So lots of ways Is it really to show off your skills or is it just to show off how much hours you put into the game? <laughs> August. August is the time. So it's almost here. Almost here. It's a world domination for large by So those updates are coming in August. Okay. That was happening, but Private games then. The other massive thing that we know players want. We got. Yes. I mean, another one that uh, our lovely community have been vocal about. And previously, for those of you who have been with Battlefield, it was called RSP, the rented server program. But now we're shifting over to private games. And what it means, the beautiful thing with it is, the baseline package that comes out is free for everyone that plays Battlefield 5. So a beautiful package, it's there to let you set up your servers and, and kind of create your experiences whether you want to capture or, you know, play with your friends. And Freeman, you can play with us. 
for sure. Thanks. You can sit with them. <laughs> and uh, obviously, you know, you love getting all that community feedback, so hit them up. Mr. Okay, that sounds like a good uh, update. And, uh, you can set private games. I'm pretty sure a lot of uh, internet personalities will use that to, like, get in games with, like, their fans and stuff like that. Supporters. And, hell, even, like, maybe... Um, a lot of collaborations might happen with shit like that. Uh, and I guess if you can get like a group of like, like a really big like, I don't know, not a LAN party, but kind of a LAN party going on, you can probably have a lot of fun with that. Dude, LAN parties are great. <laughs> you ever had like just a group of people set up a LAN party? And you're all in the same room, and then you just like, like you look over your shoulder, and then you just curse out the motherfucker behind you, and you'll be like, "Hey, asshole!" That looks like such a fake ass trailer. <laughs> that looks so fake. He came back with what was Operation Underground, and when he showed it to the team, we knew we just had to make this, and I think. Lars is sort of being part of that, that journey in the beginning. I mean, you know how much this meant to, to, to the team. Yeah, I mean, I was there when, when uh, we started to build the maps for Battlefield 3. And early on, it was kind of a brainstorm. I still remember it was tons of images on the wall. We challenged the team to, you know, where do you want to fight? Everything from subway to shopping mall to God knows everywhere. Yeah. Uh, and then the team started, or someone, smart, not me, apparently, uh, said, can, do I only get to pick one? Yeah. So they started to pick a number of them, and I think Inge then chose three of them, which was the park, the subway, and Oh my uh, god, I am, like, I, I, like, I don't mean any disrespect, but I'm getting a fucking headache right now, just watching this shit for so long. So you can see, when you see... Like, god damn. You can see the true inspiration, but what Inge Aran and the talented crew with him has done is to, to kind of take at heart... The For people who keep saying they're pressed on time and, start and they need to get this shit over with, they're dragging the fuck out of it. Holy shit. Tons of easy to spot ones, but also the most sneaky ones. Everyone loves the sneaky flank. Everyone loves the sneaky flank. The sneaky I mean, I think as you look at it, like, this is this is not Metro Remastered. This is, as the guys look at it, sort of reimagined. And I think you've got a bunch of different diverse areas. You've got uh, big open courtyards, you know, at street level and, and narrow streets. And you go down into where you see in the in, in the video here where the, where the subway cars are and into the sub-basements. And you're going to find a whole bunch of different things and different ways to play and different styles. Uh, and I know the guys have a few surprises in there as well that, uh, that I think the community's really going to enjoy when they get there. So when? When, when do we get it? That's the big question for today. Just when, 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 when. when, 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 when. when. Have to wait a bit. When? October, between <laughs> chapter four and five. <laughs> I think this, is hey. one, this is the one the team is, is really excited about as well. So, yeah. so yeah. I, I know I can't yeah. wait for October. No, no, either, so. I have a cracking time playing it in play tests. I'm yeah. so looking forward for everyone else getting to play it too and everything else that's on these new maps. Oh, yeah. Amazing map. those, oh, sorry, those aren't the only surprises. <laughs> this is the problem. We've got too much to get through. I'm just like, stop talking. We've got so many surprises for you. Please. Uh, so today we're giving do you stop talking. Details on Battlefield God. Chapter Damn. Five. Here's a little look at what the team's been working on. Please end it after this trailer because my brain is turning to mush right now. Like, this has been going for a while. I don't, like... God damn. It's not even that it's, like, boring or anything like that. It's just that it's so much, and you know, I've been sitting here for so long, my brain's turned to mush. I really hope this doesn't happen later for the rest of the fucking conferences. Well, I know it won't happen with uh, Devolver Digital, because their shit is really quick and always entertaining as fuck. So I can't wait for that. Man, I'm going to have to do some squats after this shit. Now or something and get like the blood flowing back into my legs because holy shit real life environments and using the power of frostbite we're bringing you the pacific realized with today's capabilities and technology take part in the u.s invasions as their unstoppable forces charge inland towards unwavering japanese defenses Use new amphibious units to pummel the war-ridden shores and an expanded arsenal to bring your squad to victory. We have a lot more to share about the Pacific and how it will evolve Battlefield 5 later in the Is that dude running with a fucking sword? 
I better see sword in that goddamn game. Okay, most importantly, you went on like a bunch of like research trips. Like, let's find out more about that. Oh, let's set the net one in Tahiti. Yeah. Please, let's not talk about that. Like, they went on a research trip. It's nothing new. Fuck. It's making me mad now. Quite impressive. We really appreciate the team putting in that work. Oh, yeah, taking one for the But obviously, I mean, that's the big new... Research trip, my ass. Fucking, you went on vacation. Yeah, mama here at this expensive ass place drinking the most expensive drink in my hand. Fucking, it's all business trip. Yeah, thousand yards, yeah. No, but jokes aside, it's, you know, having been with... Battlefield all through the journey, it's really where it all started. Battlefield 1942, uh, you know, the Pacific Theater, and already when we started to talk about this game, the journey through the Second World War, everyone came up and kind of, when, when do we go to the Pacific? So this is the time, it feels like a homecoming. 1942, Battlefield 1943, we've been there before, but uh, this is in a new way. And I think, I think the great thing, I mean, we hear a lot from the community, and I know, uh, you know, when we, we have these discussions, you've got, where are my U.S. forces, where's my Japanese army, uh, and, you know, getting to sit here in L.A. today and tell everybody that... My dog is currently digging into, into his own today. pillow, some, uh, familiar places like and he is just uh, we've got two having a good old time, time with that. The initial package of the Pacific in Chapter 5, uh, some ones I think, the, I think people are going to be really happy with uh, what they're going to see, and I just say, in some that, as you can hear from the ping in the, in the trailer, ping. Uh, some iconic uh, weapons. <laughs> Oh. things as well. <laughs> Mike Rand, it's coming, right? Yes. We're living for the ping, so <laughs> I mean, we wouldn't go to Iwo Jima without kind of the weaponry and the hardware. So bringing tons of iconic weapon, weapons, gadgets, and also, after all, it's battlefield. So of course, there will be a new set of vehicles. And, and we want to take that extra strap and kind of start giving you the boats, fulfilling that sandbox of I the team has focused hard on cannot kind of that believe I mean, it was very much about, uh, that they are uh, still talking about this shit <laughs> oh my god oh. and beautiful locations that you ultimately <laughs> destroy beyond recognition uh, well, Mark and Ryan, thank you both very much for joining us so if you've lost track of all of these brand new battlefield announcements I don't blame you because honestly there was quite a lot so uh, do you want to give us a little bit of a recap there? what do you mean all these Fucking new announcement. There was only like, there was only like six of them, and you guys just talked for the rest of the time. Coming in 2019, that starts with Al Sundan on June 27th, followed by Marita in July. We're bringing a brand new theater of war to Battlefield 5, the Pacific. That's releasing this fall. We're also bringing features we've heard the community ask for: an increase in max rank from 50 to 500, and private games. Also, one final announcement. Starting today, you can play Battlefield 5 in the EA and Origin Access Vault and through EA Access on PlayStation 4 when it launches next month. Is that everything? I, yeah, that's, I think that pretty much covers it. I guess you can probably stay down here with the, on the adults' table, whatever. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Thanks. That's the Battlefield Show. Yeah, I'm Julia Hardy. And I'm Freeman. And uh, if you're in the Los Angeles area, be sure to come and visit us in person at EA Play. Goodbye. All right, that was a lot to take in. Um, so I am not wasting my time with FIFA or Madden, mainly because A, I don't care about those games, and B, I've been sitting here for like an hour and a half. So I'm not wasting my time fucking uh, listening to all this shit. My brain is going to fucking melt, especially if I'm listening to shit I don't care about. Um, not to say that I don't care about Battlefield 5, that was all interesting, but they just talked for way too much, so I don't know how the fuck FIFA and Madden's gonna go, and what kind of bullshit they're gonna do. I could probably sit here, record it, and laugh at it, but I'm not gonna do that. Uh, mainly because I just don't have time to. And I have to get ready for... I gotta edit some videos and get ready for the Microsoft conference and stuff like that for uh, later today. And so, yeah, we're just gonna skip forward to The Sims... Uh, so I'm gonna cut away now, and I will see you guys back when they're talking about The Sims, and I'm gonna go take a break, because my fucking legs need some blood flow in them, so I will see you guys in a second. Okay, we are now back. I skipped ahead in time. Did some leg stretches. It's probably not going to help out whatsoever because my fucking left leg just sore like a motherfucker. 
And now they're going to talk about The Sims 4. Which, honestly, uh, I should probably skip this shit too, but, you know. Still not as good as The Sims 3. But, whatever. Oh, you guys are great. <laughs> oh, she's hosting it again. Please don't. Please don't. Talk too long. We're giving you a guided tour of what's new with The Sims 4, plus a couple of fun surprises, so stay tuned. Now, to help me translate all the fun surprises, everybody join me in welcoming General Manager Lindsay Pearson and Senior Producer Michael Duke. Hi. Thanks so much for coming out, guys. So, I'm super excited. I know you guys are super excited. Yeah, absolutely. I've been with The Sims a long time, and this is one of my favorite things to do, is come out and see all of you and tell you exciting things. Absolutely. And I mean, it's going to be a big year for us. It's actually, we're celebrating 20 years of making The Sims this year. Yeah. And <laughs> Lindsay and I keep debating it, but I think this is going to be the best year yet. I think it might be. Celebrating 20 years of making The Sims and fucking making you spend $40 on a fucking expansion that lets you have a dog. So we'll start with our big one first. I'll let you take that. Absolutely. Can they put like a whole bundle? Just make a Sims 4 bundle. That's all you got to do. Make Sims 4 bundle. What is this vacation shit? Am I gonna get fucking copyright strike for I'm gonna get copyright strike for this whole entire press conference anyways, who gives a damn? This goddamn licensed ass music. And then a mermaid came out. Wait, 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 hold up. I didn't think it was. A oh, fuck. It was a joke. It was a joke. Come on. I didn't think an actual fucking mermaid would show up. Super weird. Um, and obviously, you know, talking about fashion, there's a lot of island fashion there. Um, one of the biggest things people absolutely love. Um, what can we be? What can we dressing up as? What can we look like? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, to capture that island spirit, we needed to have a lot of new outfits and capture those Is colors. My outfit gonna be in there? You, you do need a lot of new outfits because the Sims 4, like vanilla Sims 4, doesn't have that many outfits. You can stay cool in when it's so hot. It's true. Yeah. And we had to bring in a lot of new fun colors and patterns, but also hairs, accessories, everything to deck out head to toe to just chill and relax on this beautiful island. Uh, and I mean, look, that's some amazing fashion right there. But what if, you know, I'm getting a little bit hot. I'm not someone who likes to dwell on a beach too much. <laughs> yeah, what if I want to go in the water, what's going to be happening there? So we're very excited. So for the first time in The Sims 4, our Sims... If I want to go into water. Into the open water. Say water. That was, that was the sound of me closing my cap. Yeah. Open water gameplay. She's been teasing the water. Yeah, yeah well, point, uh, it's there. I mean, like you saw in the trailer, she walks right in. Our Sims are going to be able to do that, and you can snorkel in the water. They're swimming, floating, um, and there's also those pretty awesome aqua zips. Yeah. You're in a hurry to get where you're going. <laughs> so, what inspired you guys to introduce this kind of ocean gameplay this time? Yeah, well, we've taken the Sims to a lot of different worlds and a lot of different places, but we hadn't yet really played with the idea of where the land and the water meet and really bring you bring you into an ocean environment, which seems Oh, like a great addition. Absolutely. I mean, you know, when I think of tropical islands, I'm thinking of, you know, like palm trees, ocean waves, relaxing on the beach. So, like, tell me more about this world. What can I actually do in it? Yeah, so the island of Zulani will have all of those things and more. It really is the perfect island of Zulani. What the fuck? Deal. So you can explore all these little alcoves. You can live closer to the coast, or you can live higher higher up towards the hills, or 
What's wrong? Yeah. What's wrong? So, no, wait. Is there, is there there's an active volcano here? <laughs> Absolutely. Sorry, you just yeah. want, you were selling me the dream of living on an island. Well, now I'm not sure I really want to go there. <laughs> so it is a real island. <laughs> most islands are formed by volcanoes. Yeah. Just, well, don't so you get know. nitpicky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we had to put this active volcano in there. Now, you don't have to live next to it, but right. the riskier Sims may choose to live nearby. Oh, oh uh, yeah, and then, oh, some Kel Surprise. You gotta watch that one of those lava bombs. <laughs> Don't, um, don't, no, no, don't, no, don't, do like, don't, oh, the Sims, I mean, don't, I don't know how that was going to go, I mean, what do you expect's going to happen well. when you touch something yeah. really, really hot? Yeah. Yeah. This is the most cringiest scripted thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, what other surprises are in store on what? this island? What, what the, I mean, wait, was that an active volcano? Oh, oh man, oh, don't touch, don't touch that, like, it's a fucking Sims, guys, come, come down. Exactly. Um, so in this case, the one we're really excited about is the dolphin. Oh. Yeah. Dolphins are fucking evil. Our, our art team and animators just blew away the expectation any, any the dolphins research so much trips fun. like the battlefield oh. team just going off to somewhere dolphins are so much fun especially how they grab your ass and drag you under the water and try to kill you they're so cute and you get to make like a really nice friend with them they're so cute when they're killing you absolutely well and then we also we added a bunch of tropical fish to the water too so we really wanted to get those coral reefs around the island to feel lush and full and so that meant more fish. I mean, I think, I mean, I don't know. We don't have fish like that in the UK. I mean, we might do, but the water's so murky, I've never seen them. So. <laughs> I'm sure they're <laughs> down there. I mean, they must be. be. What do you put with the chips? <laughs> right. I'm sure <laughs> they're they beautiful. So, they taste fish. delicious. You have that going for it. <laughs> I mean, I, I think the island looks, this looks so relaxing. Obviously, it's not really about vacation. It's also, you know, it's, it's about kind of working there as well. But like, um, what's kind of like the feel and the vibe of the island going to be like? You know, I think it's one of those things we talk a lot about in the team is capturing what it would be like to really <laughs> live on that island. It's not just yeah. a place you vacation, but yeah. we wanted this to be a place that's home for your sins. Or, yeah. you know, so tricks to be played on you. <laughs> well, that happens too. Well, yeah. and so there's lots to do on the beach. You saw sun tanning, sun burning, like building today. castles. The whole family can go out and play together, find seashells, or the mischievous sims, you know, knock things down. Well, and aqua zips. I just, I, I want to say it again. Don't, but they're that. so good. The, the, what are they called again? Aqua zips. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's there's a lot to look at, so you've got to take time to really explore. It all. Okay, like that's so cool and all, but is like a great place for Sims but how much is that expansion for The Sims going to cost people? Is that going to cost them fucking fifty dollars, like the other expansions that are like thirty, twenty, forty dollars? excited about a new thing that we're introducing. If your Sims want a new career to take care of this island, you can actually become a conservationist, and your job is going to be to keep this ecosystem looking beautiful. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it was certainly one of the big goals was a way for your Sims to kind of care for their world yeah. and make it a better place. Yeah, and obviously, you know, very relevant with everything that's going on today in the world and how everyone's kind of a lot more kind of aware. So was that kind of what inspired you guys to, to, to bring that in? You know, I think there's a few things that really hit us. I mean, the first was just, it's something we all care about. A lot of us on the dev team worry about the environment and what's mm -hmm. going on. but. We talked about the idea that this island's this closed ecosystem, and so your actions and choices are going to have a lot more impact. And so something new we've added here, and we're really excited about, is the island actually changes over time. So if you're taking care of it, uh, right, okay. it, it'll actually become more lush. You'll see more greenery, brighter, beautiful flowers, and there's Lindsay's favorite part. More butterflies. <laughs> so she really cares about us. But it also, uh, today happens to be World Oceans Day, which is amazing. It, that's, that's exactly right. what we were talking about. We like, totally how do we take care of these? World Ocean, Ocean Day? I ain't never heard of that <laughs> shit. A day in my life. I heard of Earth Day and Green Day and Green Days and Great Days. But I never heard of of Open Ocean Day. What the fuck did she say? <laughs> So we added a couple like odd jobs and things that you could kind of work um, on the hours you wanted to, right? And so we've added the ability to make fishing more of a Career, and then also the lifeguard, so you can get your tan while you're working. If you want to spend more time in the water, you can be a dive instructor. There's a lot of different ways to just pick up a job when you want and earn a little bit of money. Yeah. So I suppose one of the important things as well is, as it's not a vacation, as you are actually kind of living on this island, um, obviously, you know, you have to kind of be aware and know what's kind of part of local culture, because you're not just there on holiday and you go in and go out, you're living there. So what kind of, uh, you know, the side of the culture of the island can we actually see within? Right, yeah, you, this is a place that you live, and the locals are super friendly, actually, and are going to come and help you out with all sorts of different things as well, you explore the island. Oh, yeah. yeah, you were talking about this the other day, like, actually, like, all the neighbours are really, really helpful and help, yeah, yeah. And help you. you know, 
like if a fire happens to break out, your neighbor might bust in and help you put out that yeah. fire. Yeah, that's lovely. That's what <laughs> they're, they're so they nice. Should do. So, but they also have their own traditions, their own sort of uh, activities that you might be able to join in. So you might stumble across a barbecue that they've started in town or a little festival to sort of celebrate things going on. Oh man, don't talk about barbecues. You're gonna make me hungry as fuck. I want hamburger. I want a hamburger with cheese. A lot of trees. Actually, that reminds me. I gotta like cook breakfast in a little bit because I ain't fucking eat shit. Island have a little history to it. Just some sense of feeling of some people have lived here a long time, and there are traditions that are unique to this place, the world of Sulani. So how can we kind of learn more about the island's history, like when we're there? How do we do that? Aside yeah. from, you know, drinking kava. <laughs> well, I mean, that might be one experience you should try. But on top of that, something else the team was really excited about adding is there these elementals around the island that are kind of these spirits, these ancients who care a lot about Sulani. And, you know, they want to see their world taken care of. And when you do good things, they might be really happy and pleased. And if you're bad to the island, I don't think they, they may not approve. It. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, it's so like just stick in the tail. <laughs> yeah, well, and we also, we added some new traits um, with this pack that we wanted to really let, if your sims are super in touch with the land or that's important to you, you know, they can really get in touch with the water or the land and unlock some new behaviors. Yeah, okay. Uh, so from like what we've kind of seen in all the videos, it feels really inspired by like Polynesian uh, culture. So how do yeah. you kind of go about kind of educating yourself to like bring that into the game? Well, every time we make a world... I feel like if they didn't uh, tell the host about all this information beforehand she wouldn't even know what the fuck a polynesian so, was short of flying there and researching ourselves we reached out <laughs> that into you? i'm sorry yeah well ea is a big global company so we were able to reach out to a lot of our friends and coworkers across the company and say hey we're looking at exploring a place inspired by this culture yeah. and could you share with us some patterns or iconography or symbols or even items that mean something to this culture right. so we can try and create them in a way that feels rich and feels authentic well, questions just like what was iconic to you or what do you right. remember when you think back to living in that place right and some of our specific like decor items came exactly from those recommendations which is really cool it's these nice touches that i hope make it feel familiar while still feeling like a new sims world yeah. So not to make light of all that, because I think that's fantastic, but I really feel like I've been quite patient up until this point, and you haven't really mentioned it yet. Yes. Mermaids! What on earth's going on? Come on, let's cut to the chase. Mermaids, mermaids, tell us everything. There yeah. are mermaids. Yes, so mermaids are in the pack. Yeah, mermaids. Abi Anda Dasi. Anda Dasi. Darling, it's better. Now where is where to take it from me? <laughs> oh man. Why are they all so fucking pale? Chill out. I ain't gonna be super pale. It's gross. Might work out for you. But lastly, the mermaids have some some pretty cool powers that you might want to discover. Powers? Can we call that? Yeah, we could say mer powers. Sounds good. Yeah. Mer powers. There's a bit of mystery to the mermaids. Like don't ask me that. They are they are definitely worth exploring. So I can't wait for you guys to get your hands on them. So of course I would just love to keep talking about mermaids, but no conversation about the Sims would be complete without a chat about obviously interior design. So kind of what's new for the architects about there? New homes, new furniture. We saw some. I'm pretty sure we saw some uh, oh my God. stilts as well over the water. I didn't expect them to talk yeah, about so Sims so long. You know, <laughs> Holy shit. <sighs> EA, come on. I don't want to sit up right if I'm It's going on two hours now. <laughs> Let's wrap it up. I got shit to do today. We wanted to make sure there was that clutter that felt authentic and let it feel like this was home. And I need yeah, to save a couple of brain cells so I can actually pay attention during the Microsoft shit. And modern, we really wanted you to feel like you could create the like getaway of your dreams. Yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, def I'm so 100% sold on the houses over the water. I'm yeah. much more of a kind of modern sort of house. Yeah, the, for sure. And you might have noticed too, she was able to jump right off of that deck out into the water, which is the great. Best. Like your perfect little perfect escape. <laughs> All good. I'm, I'm feeling the diving into the water vibe. I know. Right it's so steep. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't wait to check out obviously the uh, new Island Living expansion pack. And now that I've got a feeling out that some of you, you know, that you've got some more exciting additional information as well for us. So it's not just that. You've got a bit more news no. to share. We do have some more news. In fact, we're going to kick to somebody else for this announcement. Okay. So we're going to sell the Sims 4 Special Edition. Where? I'm Drew 
yourself up and if you didn't know i absolutely love the sims and i'm so excited to announce this upcoming partnership with one of my favorite beings so this summer the sims is actually partnering with the amazing it gets better project as part of this partnership with it gets better sims is going to be releasing pride items in all the sims products in the next few months there's going to be a variety of It Gets Better and Pride clothing in Sims Free Play, the Sims Mobile app, and Sims 4. There's even a gender neutral bathroom in Sims 4, along with a bunch of other items to show off your pride. Thanks so much for letting me share this news with everyone. Now go out and enjoy your EA Play. Yeah. Shout out to that fucking My Neighbor Totoro in the background. That was awesome. That's cool as shit. That's cool as shit, but I'm a little confused because they said only they say in the upcoming months, but I mean like is that a limited thing, especially like the stuff in The Sims itself? Like is that limited? Is that like a limited update? Because I hope not. I hope that just stays into the game. It is sometimes, you know, when you're kind of growing up and you're figuring out who you are, you're discovering what kind of person you are and discovering, you know, about your sexuality and yeah. being able to kind of sort of role play within games is a really, really safe place to do that. So, you know, you guys have been doing it pretty much from the start, way before. So, I yeah, that, that's really good. I mean, isn't that great? That's good. That's actually really surprising. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like this is some kind of ploy that EA is putting out there because they're fucking evil as shit. We get to do stuff like that. You know, Even though this is a really happy, genuine moment, uh, I still don't trust EA. So let's just keep that in mind. Amazing stuff, you know. And also, when we get to hear from our community about the experiences they've had, or how the game helped them get through a tough time in their life, or realize something about themselves, it's just, that stuff really keeps us going as developers. Yeah. How powerful gaming is, and how much it can really kind of affect and change you as a person and show Absolutely. you stuff. It's um, it's amazing. So uh, when can we get our hands on it? Yeah. So Joey mentioned briefly, but starting June 18th, the Pride content will come to The Sims 4, and then it will start rolling out over The Sims Mobile and The Sims Free Play a little bit later. So keep an eye out for that. Absolutely. I mean, that's great, but I mean, I think you've actually got. Um, this is such a ridiculous, and it's back to back, right? What else? You've got something else that you want to announce in the summer. What's going on? We actually had, I think, two more things we wanted to yeah. talk two about. Two more things. Two more things. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Lindsay talk about this one. All right. Okay. So, first of all, earlier this year, we announced our partnership with Moschino by releasing a real-world capsule collection of looks inspired by The Sims. I see some of them, and I'm very yes. excited. <laughs> and we had Sorry, that's the sound of my water bottle. Put into all of our Sims games. So, later this summer, we're going to be bringing that fashion and more to The Sims 4 Moschino Stuff Pack. Amazing. Yes. That's a lot of packs going on for The Sims. So much money this game is expensive as fuck. Well, so I think one of the things that I'm most excited about in this stuff pack is um, for the first time, we're actually going to add a career as part of a stuff pack. Okay. So we've decided the perfect career for this pack. Sims need a fucking, like, they need some sort of version of the game that just gives you, like, all of the shit or something. Like, it's, fuck, like, it's too much money. Wow, well, we've covered so much so far. A new expansion, a new partnership, a new stuff pack, but we're not done yet, folks. No, we're not. Michael and Lindsay brought one more big surprise for all of you guys. Well, big surprise. Yes, I know you're all hoping, so we thought maybe we could tell you which game pack we had in mind. Ooh, I don't know. I, I think maybe we could conjure up something. All right, Mike, I'll let you spell it out for them. The next game pack for The Sims 4 is Realm of Magic. <laughs> cool. <laughs> really cool. That's amazing. But these packs are well, fucking the expensive as shit. Have you guys like seen the prices for these shits? Last time I checked, uh, yeah, so they so were really going for like 30 to fucking 40 to uh, fucking 20 small. to whatever small. amounts of dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if you want everything in The Sims 4, then you're putting down some serious fucking money. 
members asking for yeah. that. <laughs> yeah? It's, We're it's very a popular excited. Request. Who doesn't love a little bit of magic? Yes, it's true. <laughs> so big thank you to Lindsay <laughs> and Michael, and thank you so much for showing us what's next in The Sims 4. Yeah. So let's just quickly recap this, because there's a few things to get through, and it's hot, and you might have forgotten. So uh, the Island Living Reveal trailer is live now. The expansion is playable here at EA Play, and you can play it at home soon. The It Gets Better Pride content starts rolling out, and in a few weeks, oh, sorry, in a few weeks, and the Moschino stuff pack comes out later this summer. So don't forget to check out all The Sims social channels for even more info and launch dates. So that's it for The Sims. It's been an exciting day here with so, so much news. I can't wait to join the Fan Fest and get my hands on the Island Living Expansion. That's it for The Sims. Is that it for EA? Can I get my brain cells back, please? Cause I'm like I'm I'm losing it. I'm losing it. I like I can't. My patience is gone. <laughs> all right. Is that it? All right. Thank you, Greg Miller. Game over, Greggy. I'm gonna pause you right there, my friend. Um. Everybody has a friend in Greg Miller. And Pertillo. Pertillo's a, a adorable little precious puppers. Anyways, um, <laughs> well, well, he couldn't said it any better. If you made it this far into the video and your brains aren't dead like mine, thank you guys for watching. I know I skipped the uh, FIFA and Madden shit. I don't have time to watch that. I have videos to edit. On top of that, I'm just really not interested in them, and I'm so sick of seeing them every goddamn year, and it pisses me off. Nothing changes in the game, so you're not really going to miss that much. If you want to go look those up, you can look them up yourself. Um, but yeah, I didn't expect much from EA, and at the end of the day, I still didn't get much from EA. Like, I did, Honestly, we only got like, what, like, that was in all total, there's like six games they talked about two of them which are the same every year and one of them apex legends which is kind of like really expected like most of the shit that they're talking about um still interesting and surprising but that shit is like it's expected it's a battle royale game it's a game that's constantly going to be updated as time goes on it has seasons and battle passes and stuff like that so it's nothing too crazy surprising like um, my jaw's not dropping or anything that Star Wars game, Star Wars game, oh, uh, fuck, what, what are they calling it again? I, I already forgot. What is it, Jedi Last Order? Is that what they're calling it? I don't remember. Um, again, like, even at this point, I'm not really that excited for it. Like, it looks nice, but again, EA has really managed to just fuck it up for, like, the past five plus years, so... Even though the game looks nice and the demo looks nice and it's like, hey man, I really want to play that right now. And it kind of feels like a resurgence of uh, of uh, the Force Unleashed, which I've constantly always said, maybe not on this channel, but at least in personal talks that I have with people. I kind of um, always go like, I really want a new Force Unleashed game, right? Because Force Unleashed 1 was great and then Force Unleashed 2 kind of sucks. So... So it's nice to see that there's some sort of game going in that direction. But again, it's hard to be excited for it since EA is EA and they're going to fuck it up. But now that I know that Respawn is developing it, so maybe they, maybe EA will back off on Respawn because, because they've seen what they can do with Apex Legends and uh, in Titanfall. And maybe EA will just back the fuck off, right? Um, What else? The Sims 4, again, it's like... The Sims is The Sims. Like we're put it, they're putting packs that exist in The Sims Three already, and the only difference is that they're in The Sims Four now, and the graphics are a little better, and all that other crap. I really just want a version of the game that comes out that's like, hey, buy this, and with that you buy like all these packs. Like make it like a hundred dollar version of the game or something like that, because there's a lot of fucking DLC for The Sims Four. <laughs> And if you, if you just go online and look at all the packs and shit, like, it's expensive as fuck. And it's like, it's like, come on, man, that's a lot of money to drop down on The Sims 4. And I don't even play The Sims 4 that much. Would I play The Sims 4? Maybe. Who knows? I was really, I'm meh with it. 
like Sim 4 didn't really grab me like uh, Sims 3 did, so I don't really care that much. Uh, Apex Legends, again, like I said earlier, looks great. Everything great. And then Battlefield 5 is Battlefield 5. What did you expect? You get more shit. You're going to get more shit. They're going to try and make the game better. Uh, and that's all I can really say for that. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like I said earlier. Fucking, I didn't expect much for EA, and I didn't really get much out of it for it myself. But it wasn't completely boring. Like, that's a plus. Like, and for once, they didn't sit... Well, I was about to say for once, they didn't get on stage and talk about uh, talk about how they're like... Sp how they're like fucking sponsoring charities and shit like that and how you should really love them because they're good people for doing good things but then they talked about the gay pride stuff towards the end so even that in itself is still kind of shady for ea like i'm happy that the awareness is out there well the awareness has been out there for like forever but i'm happy that they're gonna focus on that and that's nice and all that content's coming into the game and stuff especially a game heavily based on I say heavily based, but loosely based on real life, so, you know, it's a life away from life. Like, that's cool, but, again, don't trust EA. So, yeah. I think that's all I really have to say for this. Like, there's nothing much I can say for EA. Um, yeah, so, in the description below, there's a link to my Twitter if you want to talk to me personally on twitter or maybe just follow me or whatever the hell you want to do click on that link in the description takes you to my twitter you can do whatever my dms are always open uh just in case you want to talk about anything at all hell you can even talk about how your day's going it's fine i really like i don't want to say i don't care but uh i guess the word to use is it's not a problem for me like i'll i'll take my time out of my day to talk to people why not it's always fun um, also, in the comment sections below, I don't know, if you had a favorite part of the conference, just tell me, tell me what you're excited for, most of you people are probably excited for the Star Wars shit, and, uh, you know, like, if, if there's anything really crazy that happened in the FIFA and Madden stuff, I guess you can tell me in the comments below, or curse me out for skipping it or whatever, but honestly, I really don't care about sports games to be to be honest like every year they kind of suck more and more they haven't been good since like 2009 for me that and they want you to spend a million dollars on like their uh, fantasy league bullshit so yeah it's crazy um yeah so that's it like comment subscribe all that jazz uh and as always i want to thank you guys for watching and I will catch you at the Microsoft E3 presentation conference. So, I'll see you guys later. I'm a chef, chef too.